Drop it off that door, eh? That'd be good. Yeah, well, don't worry, I'll walk. Good morning, this is Errol Flynn for Whistler Cable 6 and it's Super G Sunday. What a beautiful day. Look behind us, the skies are actually clear right now, the temperatures have dropped down considerably. What a beautiful day it would have been for a downhill had we had these temperatures, but today is going to be a great day, Super G Sunday. We're out here at the Black Home Helipad with Steve Flynn, the flyer and owner of uh, this beautiful piece of equipment out here. And with him standing beside him is Gary Childs from CBC. Gary, we've got a unique piece of equipment hooked onto this helicopter, it doesn't look like you could fish with it. Well, no, we uh, we tried fishing with it, but it, uh, the hook's too dull. We uh, it's a stabilized camera system, and uh, the reason the CBC are using it is that uh, it's a very very stable system. The camera has a, a focal length, maximum focal length of 550 millimeters, and we can steer and follow a skier going down the hill at the far end of the lens without any shake or vibration. That's unbelievable. If anybody had been watching yesterday, you would have seen some actually uh, terrific overhead shots. It's uh, It's got to be tough operating, Steve, a helicopter and trying to get this thing to uh, to stay stable, but you said there's some gyroscopes in here, and you probably know a little bit about this now. Yeah, Gary could explain that a little better. There are three gyroscopes in there that stabilize the camera. Uh, operating the system from the pilot's point of view, it's really simple. Uh, I've got the easy job. Gary has a tough job. He controls the camera and tells it what to do and what to to, to focus in on and uh, that's the tough part. Flying the helicopter is easy. I'm just a platform for him and he, he runs the camera and that's his job. Gary, you can see a little ball on the outside but what people haven't seen yet, we're going to show them a little bit later, is all of the equipment that's hooked up on the inside of this helicopter. It's phenomenal. Well, yeah, there's a lot involved, a lot of wires, a lot of boxes, but uh, that's what's required to uh, to provide this type of, uh, of photography. Where else would you use something like this besides skiing? We use it for many, many live events. The West Cam right now is uh, has been used for Barcelona Olympics, Lillehammer. We've done all of the last uh, Super Bowls, World Series, pretty well every prestigious live television sports coverage we're used on. And we also have film systems. We do a lot of motion picture work and have worked on most of the uh, the larger produced um, motion pictures. Gary, where was the technology for this developed? I understand it was local. Uh, the system was developed at Westinghouse in Hamilton, Ontario back in the 60s. That's where the word Westcam came from. And it was a, it was a military type operation and became um, available for the commercial market and just skyrocketed. When you're using this kind of system, you've got to be up in the air for quite some time, Steve. How long were you up yesterday? Uh, I think we did about three hours total flying time. And that included covering the race and doing scenic shots as well. What's the cost of one of these things? Fishing rods are a lot cheaper. <laughs> I'd say it's around, uh, depending on what you put on, about 250, 300,000 US. That's a lot of money for one camera, and of course CBC, have, uh, they've got several cameras up on course, and they had some great uh, coverage yesterday from top to bottom, and it was pretty exciting. It was very exciting. Actually, from the ground yesterday, they had a much better point of view than we did with the fog. It hampered what we could do considerably, and the, um, I thought the coverage from the ground was exceptional. I watched it last night when I got home, and it was a great race. It was a great race, too bad our Canadians didn't do so well, but there were some bright spots on it. Well, let's take a look on the inside, and uh, maybe perhaps, uh, Gary, you could just sort of walk us through some of this stuff, if you don't mind. No problem. Do you want to start with the ball? Or with let's the... do that. That would be great. The system's housed in this ball. It's, uh, it's round simply because of the aerodynamic uh, uh, convenience. There's a window here. The lens looks through the window and it's 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 away from the window by about two inches so that any wind buffeting moving the camera uh, will not affect the uh, the lens if i take the cover off here the system has a uh, a fuji 24 times lens focal length is 11.5 millimeters to 275 millimeters and you can double it 
the uh, video camera head is right here where the rest of the camera body is inside the, uh, the helicopter. It's a fairly special camera, standard product, but it allows us to put a, a fairly uh, good camera, well an excellent camera, inside a small ball. Everything has to be driven by motors, there is no hands-on, so you'll see various motors on the lenses and uh, to drive the camera it will tilt down 90 degrees and tilt up 30 degrees. We have uh, on this side is where the stabilizer is, the gyros that you mentioned earlier. There are three gyros. They're located around this configuration and they actually stabilize the system in the three major axes in space, pitch, roll, and yaw. So as the aircraft, one second, I'm just going to move this. As the aircraft is pitching and rolling, I'm going to reverse it by moving the camera. You have this kind of freedom, up to 30 degrees in the pitch and roll axis. Also, if the aircraft yaws, and that means rotates about the yoke or the, the mast, that's this. The system will not, uh, will not go with the aircraft. You'll see on many, many helicopter-type helicopter shots where if the helicopter is unstable due to gusty air, the camera will be bouncing back and forth. In this type of a system, because it does not acknowledge the yawing of the aircraft, even though the helicopter is moving about like this, you don't see that in the image. These three gyros run about 12,000 uh, revolutions per minute, and there's a motor here which drives it in what we call pan, and then there's a motor down here which drives it in tilt. Pretty impressive piece of equipment. Uh, how difficult is the uh, operation of the helicopter with a ball hanging off the side? That's got to be pretty tough for, for you, Steve. Uh, it's not really noticeable at all. Um, when we operate the camera with the helicopter, it's a pilot plus the camera operator, Gary, plus with the specialized equipment in the back and a good load of fuel to cover the major part of the event, then that's pretty well a full load. You wouldn't, there's really no room for any passengers or uh, excess crew that, that might want to tag along. It's pretty well a two-man operation, but if you keep it as a two-man operation, we've got... Uh, Lots of room. There's a, a monitor I see mounted over here on your side, Steve, and looks like there's a couple on your on your side, Gary. Uh, the monitor over here for Steve and two over here. What are they for? Well, the monitor on the pilot side is uh, so that I can see the shot and uh, uh, adjust with Gary when he makes a call and I can see what he's looking for. And Gary's monitors, he can explain that. Uh, the monitors that I have, I have two. The large one in the blue hood is uh, is my monitor for viewing the race and, and viewing what the camera is seeing. And the one that's in the custom-made cardboard monitor hood at the very top is uh, is a waveform monitor. It just allows me to check the integrity of the video image. Now, do you this gets bounced right down to your receiving station down uh, down at the bottom of the hill, does it not? Yeah, there's a microwave transmitter on board, which is on the other side of the helicopter, and uh, we just take the video image right out of the camera, send it down through the transmitter onto the antenna, and then on the, on the ground at the CVC location is a tracker with an antenna following what we are doing. So as long as he has line of sight of what we're doing, he can follow the helicopter, and, and if there's nothing getting in between us, you'll get very, very solid pictures. Wow, what's all this stuff in the back? Uh, various componentry for the camera. There's camera. Here, I can. Uh, we'll open the door here, Ken. It looks sort of like a rat's nest. Uh, it could be made neater, I suppose. But when you're doing these transient operations, you really different configuration. Every helicopter has a different configuration. Uh, basically, it's just power supplies. You can see the camera body, with uh, an extension of the head that's inside the ball, and then the rest are various power supplies. And uh, this system is a digital system, and so one of the boxes uh, handling all of the uh, the software and the uh, the driving of the of the system. Well, guys, that's great. Uh, we appreciate the tour, and uh, we know we're going to get some excellent shots today. The weather looks terrific, of course, for the. Uh, uh, for the race, and uh, I'm sure you're going to get a lot more uh, use out of this today than you did yesterday. Hope so.
Gary, thanks very much for uh, sharing that with us and, uh, and, and, and educating us. And Steve, of course, always a pleasure out here at the Blackcomb uh, Helicopter Helipad. Thanks. Thanks, bro. That's right. Thanks, bro. That's right. So uh, we'll be right back after this short break.